The government has taken the approach that New Zealand will do its fair share in limiting global warming through the Paris Agreement, and New Zealand's emission targets have been legislated. But methane targets remain contentious because there are different views on what they should be. This short video explains things to consider when determining a fair methane target, including the importance of the split gas approach, reporting metrics, why both past and future emissions matter, and the significance of non-science factors. Methane is a short-lived gas, which means it decays in the atmosphere a lot faster than long-lived gases, like carbon dioxide. Because of this, long-lived and short-lived gas emissions have different impacts on warming. It's also important to understand that there are two types of methane. Biogenic methane from cows and sheep is recycled within a larger carbon cycle because it begins as CO2 that's already in the atmosphere. Livestock eats grass and methane is released. After 12 years or so in the atmosphere, methane breaks down into CO2 and water. When grass converts CO2 through photosynthesis, the whole cycle starts again. This means if livestock emissions remain stable, there is no additional warming. Fossil fuel methane, on the other hand, is chemically the same, but it originates from the ground. So when mined and burnt, new emissions are released into the atmosphere, creating additional warming. These differences are significant, especially as methane makes up most of our agricultural emissions. That's why Dairy NZ has been working hard to ensure methane is fairly recognised and treated. In 2019, our sector won a hard-fought agreement to have a split gas approach in the Climate Change Response Amendment Act 2019, which recognises that biogenic methane only needs to reduce, not go to net zero like long-lived gases. With over 16,000 public submissions made to the government, most opposed the split gas approach and wanted agriculture to adopt the net zero approach for all gases, including methane. However, we believed securing the split gas approach was critical to the future of our sector, because without it, there would be no transparency of agriculture's contribution and progress towards targets, whatever that target may be. Due to the strong opposition our sector faced, Dairy NZ accepted the current legislated methane targets as a package to get the split gas approach across the line, as well as securing a regular target review to allow us to advocate for the latest science to be used to inform targets. Dairy NZ has always advocated for the government to use the most up-to-date scientific information to inform targets. The science has rapidly developed in recent years, including new greenhouse gas metrics like GWP-STAR, which is a more accurate tool in measuring the warming impact of gases. Listen to climate change scientist Dr Michelle Kane as to why. Usually, GWP or GWP-100 uh, is just a single number and you say, I have a methane emission, I multiply it by GWP and that's the CO2 equivalent emission. Uh, thereby denoting equivalence between those two different greenhouse gases. The equivalence is not based on the basis of warming, so they're not equivalent in terms of the warming that happens to the Earth. In the new metric called GWP star, you get a much better representation of the temperature response um, in these CO2 equivalent emissions. The good news is agriculture's methane emissions have stabilised in New Zealand over the last decade, and climate scientists have suggested that New Zealand only needs to reduce methane emissions by 0.3% per year from current levels to achieve no additional future warming. However, Professor Dave Frame has said that since 1990, methane has contributed about a fifth of New Zealand's current warming, and agriculture about a third. So while it's important to think about future warming, methane targets need to acknowledge past contributions as well, if we're to bring temperatures down. But it's not fair to expect the ag sector to do all the heavy lifting to meet temperature goals. Reducing methane doesn't replace the need to get long-lived gases to net zero, because they are the main cause of long-term warming. Dairy NZ will be advocating for a fair target that uses an appropriate warming metric and one that allows the sector to remain profitable.
A recent Nature article by climate scientists acknowledges that science is just one of many factors that should inform targets. Targets will also depend on economic, social, equity and political considerations, including responsibility for past warming, costs of reductions and non-climate impacts. Similar factors are also influencing the future competitive landscape of New Zealand milk, as some of our biggest customers like Mars and Nestle are already setting their own ambitious targets that go well beyond New Zealand's legislation. The government's emissions target review in 2024 is our opportunity to advocate for targets that more accurately account for the warming impact of methane, using tools like GWP Star, alongside public and customer expectations, technology availability and cost. This will be a key focus for us all over the next couple of years. Our transition to producing nutritious food with less greenhouse gases must be sensible and according to the latest science. That's why Dairy NZ is an industry partner of the Primary Sector Climate Action Partnership, Hewaka Ekanoa, to ensure our sector maintains a degree of control and farmers get a fair deal when agriculture emissions are priced by 2025.